Now to Congress, where the head of a railroad company behind that toxic derailment in Ohio faced questions from lawmakers for the second time. People in East Palestine are still dealing with the effects, and some of them spoke during the Senate <clears throat> hearing on Wednesday. Here's CBS correspondent Roxana Saberi. This was a preventable accident. Do you agree? Yes, I do agree. And Back in the Senate hot seat. For decades, the railroads have lobbied to undermine safety rules. They're still at it. Nearly seven weeks after a Norfolk Southern train derailed in East Palestine, Ohio, spewing toxic chemicals. I want to open by stating how deeply sorry I am for the impact this derailment has had. CEO Alan Shaw said he supports some aspects of the bipartisan Senate bill tightening rules on rail safety including additional funding for training, mandatory defect detectors on tracks, and requirements to notify first responders of hazardous materials on rail cars. None of us knew exactly what dangers were on that train. East Palestine resident Misty Allison testified that her town and family are still living in fear. My seven-year-old has asked me if he is going to die from living in his own home. What do I tell him? Back in East Palestine, cleanup continues. The EPA says nearly 8 million gallons of wastewater have been shipped out for treatment and more than 8,000 tons of contaminated soil. But the agency says the air and municipal water are safe for now. Do you want to be bought out of your home by Norfolk Southern? Yes. Still, yes, resident you know. Joe Samick says his daughter has been getting rashes. You know, I feel safe being here and here we are stuck because we can't afford to just stop and leave. And Roxana Saberi joins me for more from East Palestine. Roxana, what else are residents of East Palestine telling you? Well, some residents uh, say that they have received debit cards from Norfolk Southern to pay for housing, food, and other needs so that they can leave town temporarily while crews have started to dig up part of the tracks and to dig out to um, remove some of the contaminated soil. But one person told me uh, he le leaves town for a few days at a time with his family, but he has to come back to bring his kids to school because they still have to go to school. Others tell me that Norfolk Southern has largely denied their request for financial support. Samick, for example, uh, the gentleman, gentleman we spoke to in our piece, says though he and his neighbors are within one mile of the derailment site here in East Palestine, they're technically outside city limits, so they haven't been able to qualify for compensation. Norfolk Southern says it's working with Samick to find a solution, but in the meantime, he is very worried about his two daughters' health now and in the long term, and other residents tell me the same thing. Don? And Roxana, the CEO of Norfolk Southern, said, I'm determined to make this right. OK, his company has given twenty four million dollars to East Palestine. But what are the what are the town people who live there and who live in the surrounding area? What what do they define as making it right? Uh, well, the ones we've spoken to all say they want more details. And it's good you mentioned the surrounding area because there are people outside East Palestine. Uh, maybe two, three, four, or five miles away, who have told me that they're also feeling symptoms like a cough or a tight chest, headaches, watery eyes, and they don't want to go outside. And they feel that they have been ignored. They want their soil tested as well. I mean, many homeowners here in East Palestine I've talked to say they want their homes bought by. Uh, by Norfolk Southern at a fair market value. They want to leave town if they can, even if they dreamed before of raising their kids here. And they also want long-term health care in case their problems, uh, their health problems persist or if new health problems pop up. We know Norfolk Southern has said it's looking into both of those issues, but we haven't heard the details yet. And we've also heard from residents here who want independent testing and more testing of their soil, water and air, not just of what are called volatile organic compounds, but also for something called dioxins, which are persistent chemical compounds that can linger in environments. Now, the EPA has begun testing soil in Ohio and Pennsylvania for dioxins. They've tested more than 90 farms so far. And while they don't expect final results for several weeks, they say that their preliminary results show that there are uh, dioxins at levels that are similar to typical levels that you would find in a regular setting. John? Mm. Roxana Saberi in East Palestine, Ohio, for us. Thank you. You're welcome.